What's going on, Lead Gen Beasts? It's your boy, Matt A. Ice Leads for Locals. In this video, I wanted to do a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create a Facebook lead form ad campaign. We're gonna do this step-by-step -step from start to finish. And I'm making this video because I've noticed that uh, a lot of people get stuck on the, sometimes using the Facebook interface uh, inside of the ads manager, and they miss certain steps that cause them to, uh, cause their campaigns not to perform really well. So I wanna make sure you guys don't miss anything. So make sure you stick with me to the end on this so you know how to properly set these campaigns up. Because uh, also, as you probably know, Facebook is incredibly notorious for making really easy things really, really difficult. It's kind of frustrating. So uh, hopefully uh, this video stays up to date for a little while because they constantly change it. But anyways, hopefully this will help. Uh, if it does, please smash that like button. Make sure you subscribe. Check out all the links in the description. I always have good stuff for you guys there. And let's rock and roll. So let's get to the ads manager. Hopefully you're able to do that on the sidebar here. Sometimes you have to go to your profile picture up here. Uh, let's see, I don't even know if I have it on mine. Every profile is a little bit different. I don't know why that's the case. At the end of the day, you can always go to business.facebook.com to get to your ads manager. So I'm, I'm just gonna click ads manager here. Now, this is not gonna be a video where I talk about strategy. This is purely a technical video where I'm showing you how to create the actual campaigns. If you want additional training on Facebook ads, again, I'll have plenty of stuff in the description. You could check it out. I also have a Facebook ads mastery course that walks you through, I basically just give you all the strategies I've ever done and continue to do uh, with Facebook ads. So if you wanna check that out, it'll be in the description. All right, uh, let's see. So up here at the top, uh, well, of course we could always click campaigns, but up here at the top, Click ads manager. Uh, if you get to this type of page where it says account overview, we're going to go to campaigns. All right. So we're on our ads manager. So what we're going to do is click on create. So we're on the, uh, actually, before I do that, I'll break this down. There are three tabs right here, guys. You have campaigns, ad sets, and ads. Campaigns is, this is where you're going to select the, basically the campaign objective, which is going to be lead generation. If you're using the lead forms. And then ad sets, that's where you set your budget. It's where you put your targeting, where you select your uh, ad placements, et cetera. And then your ads, obviously that's where we're going. You're going to create the, you're going to insert the uh, actual ad images, you know, the creatives, the ad copy. Uh, we'll also uh, create the lead form uh, on the ad level as well. So just be aware of that. All right, we're going to click on create here and create a brand new campaign. And we are going to go to leads. So if you don't see lead generation, again, you might see lead generation on yours. I don't know. Uh, Facebook is it's different for a lot of a lot of people. I don't know why, but you're going to click leads. All right, that's what we want. If uh, that's you know, assuming that you want to do the lead forms. All right, so we'll click uh, OK. Campaign name. What I usually do for this is I'll put a, uh, like if this is my first campaign in this specific industry or with uh, the specific offer that uh, I have, then I'll put a one in front of it. it you know. I like, uh, I like numbering them because as you do more campaigns, it's just easier to stay organized so you know which one is which. I'm just going to do test. And then I put uh, lead form or lead gen, whatever, so that I know I'm using the uh, lead generation campaign objective. All right. So we're trying to stay organized ahead of time. Now, if you're... Campaign, like if you're in a specific industry that uh, falls under one of these special ad categories, you're going to need to go ahead and select those. You can read those, uh, learn a little bit more about them. Do not try to circumvent this, guys. Facebook's pretty smart. They're kind of uh, they're kind of dumb when it comes to really simple stuff, but when it comes to stuff like this, they're really smart. They will catch you. They will ban your ad account. So just go ahead and select the special ad category. We still have plenty of. Uh, interest that you can target and stuff like that. So don't try to get around that. Trust me. I usually don't do like this used to be campaign budget optimization. Now they call it advantage campaign budget. I don't know. I don't know what the difference is. I don't think there is. I've never used it uh, because I always manage my budget from the ad set level. I don't, I don't really do it from the campaign unless you're running a, a lot of different ad sets at once and you're testing all kinds of different stuff. You got a massive budget for that. Then maybe use advantage campaign budget. I usually recommend just keeping it off. All right, let's click next. Ad set name. I usually, uh, wh whoever I'm targeting, what the demographics are, the interests that I'm gonna be targeting. So I might do you know 25 to 40 
and then maybe it's housing interests. You know? And then uh, maybe I do two layers because I like to do uh, multiple layers within my targeting. I talk about that more in the description. I got tr uh, extra training on that, but I like to stack my interests so that I get really, really targeted with my audience or at least as targeted as possible. So yeah, anyways, uh, make sure that instant forms is selected. Go ahead and select your business page right here. You do need a Facebook business page. Uh, if this is your first time running a lead form campaign, you are gonna need to accept the terms and conditions. So make sure you do that. All right, from here, we have our, uh, our budget. I usually don't recommend anything less than $20, $25 per day. It really depends on what you're doing. Also, the you know, the, like if you're doing this in a local area and you only have 100, maybe 200,000, 250,000 people uh, that you're targeting, you could probably get away with five to 10 bucks per day. But if you are you have a pretty large audience, a few million people, I usually recommend at least $20 per day. Now, you do want to start a... Uh, start you do want to set a start date on this because you don't want to uh, well really it's the the time that is the most important thing but uh i usually recommend setting this two maybe three days out a sp uh, probably three days out especially if this is a brand new ad account that you've set up you haven't run campaigns before it takes longer typically for new ad accounts to get ads approved so you want to make sure that all of your ads are approved before you launch the campaign. You do not want to launch the campaign. You know, let's say you have four ads in your ad set. You don't want two of them approved. You run it. And then as the campaign's running, the other two get approved because now you're not properly testing it. And I've just never had good results with that. So you want to give yourself a couple of days to make sure all of your ads get approved within the campaign. So set this out a couple of days, always start at first thing in the morning. I usually, uh, I'll put this at like 4.30 in the morning, give or take, you know, it doesn't have to be exact. But the reason I do that is because with new campaigns, it takes a while for Facebook to actually start spending money in the campaign. <clears throat> so you wanna make sure that you give Facebook all day to, to run the campaign when it's brand new. So always start at first thing in the morning. All right, from here, you have a, a lot of different uh, options. I'm not going to cover audience targeting and stuff like that in this video. Again, this is a technical video. If you wanna learn more about how to create really powerful and really targeted uh, layers of interest and things like that, check out the description, training in the description. All right, but if you have custom audiences, you can click right here, they will show up. You can select them, you can create new ones. Like if you have a list of people, that you want to bring in and target. You can also create lookalike audiences around them, et cetera, et cetera. All right, locations, obviously. So we're going to click edit and you want to, well, I usually recommend changing this to people living in this location. And then if you need to change, like if you're not doing a nationwide campaign, you click the X right here, maybe go to a specific state, province, wherever you're at. Uh, so I'm in Florida. So we'll type in Florida here and we're, we're looking for the state. Okay, so select your your geography, you know, the, the geographical location you're going after. You can also do zip codes as well. It's up to you. Age. Uh, so we'll click edit here. You know, it depends on the industry I'm running Facebook ads in. A lot of the times I can't adjust the age or the gender or anything. I don't, I don't really mess with the gender anyways, but because uh, a lot of the industries that I work in, I have to use the special ads category. So they don't allow you to adjust the age range, and we still get really good results. Again, Facebook is pretty smart with its algorithm. So if you are running campaigns for wealth management, it knows not to, you know, maybe not immediately in the beginning, but it, it, it very quickly figures out that, okay, they're offering wealth management, probably don't need to, their, their target audience is probably not 18, 19, 20 year olds, whatever. So, uh, but if you do have the option and you know the age range, then go ahead and update that. Uh, but it's just like if you're in a special ads category and you can't, don't freak out about it. You can still get really good results. Detailed targeting. This is where we're going to put our interest. The very first thing you want to do, though, is uncheck advantage detailed targeting. I've never had good results with it. Maybe you have. Maybe you could. Uh, if you want to test it, you can. But I prefer to get very targeted with the interest here uh, as targeted as possible and then run my ads to them. 
And then later on, you can always create a lookalike audience, uh, you know, uh, to, you know, to, to kind of expand out and, and like create larger audiences, but I don't like using advantage detailed targeting. So type in your, your interests here. I'm just going to type in some examples, type in business, and then let's, uh, I'll just show you really quick how to create a multi-layer audience that you can target when you click narrow audience, let's just do uh, real estate. Okay, so basically what I'm telling Facebook here is I want to go after people interested in business who are also interested in real estate. You can see that this has brought my uh, audience size down quite a bit, but it's much more targeted. So play around with the different interests. You can also, I love using the suggestions box right here, or the, uh, the tab right here. So type in the broad general uh, interest that you want to target and then click suggestions and you can get some really good interest right here. Um, that's how I find 95% of all my interests. I do have a, I, I do use a tool sometimes it's called audiencer. I'll have a link down below. It gives you, I think you get a 50% discount on it. Um, one time fee and you get lifetime access, but it's a really cool, uh, Facebook interest targeting tool that, um, I have found additional interests that I did not know existed using that tool. So you can check it out, but I do recommend layering your interest here. It might be a little bit more expensive. Sometimes it's not, you just have to test it, but at least you're getting much more targeted and you're not relying just on the Facebook algorithm to, to find your ideal audience. You're, you're basically giving, uh, you're telling Facebook exactly who you want to put your audience in front of. And then the algorithm is going to work within that audience. So you're kind of getting the best of both worlds there. So like really, really good targeting. Plus you're getting the algorithm. So I do recommend layering your interests. You can also exclude as well. So uh, I'll typically use this to exclude certain titles. Like, uh, you know, if I'm running a life insurance campaign, I obviously don't want my ads to be shown in front of life insurance agents. So I'll exclude the life insurance agent title, right? Uh, you can mess around with the languages if you want. I never have, never really had an issue with it. Advantage plus placements recommended. I always do recommend leaving this on unless you're running a very, very specific type of campaign and ad. I rarely ever use manual placements. I just let Facebook do its thing with this. You could test whatever you want. All right. Uh, oh, also as a side note here, sometimes you will get a, a notification on the right hand side here, uh, especially when you're doing lead forms, I, I guess, I guess when you're doing using conversions as well, uh, the, the campaign objective, but it'll tell you like, Hey, you might get zero conversions or you might generate zero leads. Just completely ignore that guys. I've seen that so many times and my campaigns do really well. I'm not worried about it. I don't know why that comes up. Uh, but don't freak out. Like if you see that, Oh my God, something's wrong with my targeting or whatnot. Like you may need to increase the audience size, but don't worry about it. So, uh, let's go ahead and click next. All right. So that's our ad set. Uh, let's see. So we set our budget. We did our targeting. Uh, we did the placements. So let's, uh, let's move on to the ad. All right. So the amount of ads per ad set, th this is how I do it. So I'll have my campaign. I'll have one campaign. I'll have one ad set, and then I'll have usually three ads minimum. That's only if I'm doing 20 to $25 per day within the ad set though. So what I found is if you, let's say you're doing $10 per day and you have three or four ads, it's going to take a lot longer for Facebook to optimize those ads and like figure out which one is best. So it's not really a good use of your budget. Uh, the more ads you have in your ad set, the more ad budget you want to give Facebook. All right. So just keep that in mind. It, that it does have a, like the results that you get, it does have a pretty strong correlation with budget, how many ads you have. So I typically the way I do it is I'll do $20, $25 per day, and I'll do three different types of ads because we're going to let Facebook decide and well figure out which one is performing best within our campaign. I'll usually do a single image. I'll do a carousel ad and a video ad. So again, I teach all that in my course, another training or whatnot. Let's go ahead and assume that I'm going to do a single image on this one. So I will name it single image one. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, make sure you got the right Facebook page there. And then let's scroll down right here is where you'll change it from single image or video, or if you're doing carousel ads, 
you'll you'll select carousel. I'll do that in a second. Uh, multi, see, this is all new stuff. Standard enhancement. You can I just keep that. Help people discover your products when they show commercial intent. Uh, sure, uh, that, that doesn't seem like it would hurt. I haven't really messed around with this. I would say to leave it. All right, not probably not. Uh, it's probably not going to move the needle a lot uh, and make a big difference. But uh, the main things that we want are the ad creatives here. Uh, all right, so let's. Uh, I'll usually just remove this. And then we'll click add media and you can add an image or a video. Make sure you choose the correct one. I've had people make this mistake and they're like, Matt, I, I don't understand why I can't upload my, my video. It's because they, they chose add image. Make sure you choose the right one. All right, so we'll click add image for now. You're just gonna upload it into your account here. And then uh, you double click it and it inserts it into the, the ad. I'm not gonna do it now because it's lagging a little bit. And then you'll see it here on the preview. All right, primary text is going to be your actual ad copy. I'm not gonna go into writing ad copy. It's all in the course and additional training, but uh, you type in your ad copy, it'll pop up a preview over here, good to go. Headline, always put a headline here, guys. And what I typically recommend for headlines is whatever it is you're offering in the actual ad, so whatever your lead magnet is, if it's a free guide, a discount code, whatever, I put that in the headline as well. Get your free life insurance guide, get your 25% discount code or whatever it is, because we're trying to create consistency. So the ad copy, the ad creative, the headline, it all needs to uh, conform together. Like it, it needs to all have the same message and be saying the same thing. We don't want to confuse people. So make sure that, that uh, it's consistent with your ad copy and the ad creative. Description, don't put too much thought into this. This is like maybe one more call to action about, or one more dis, uh, explanation of what the offer is going to give the person, what the benefit is, et cetera. Uh, it, it doesn't take up a lot of real estate here, so don't worry too much about it, but put something there. Call to action, this is gonna be up to you. I usually do learn more for my, uh, for my call to action, but that's also because a lot of the, offers we make in the Facebook ad campaigns that we do for the, the industries I work in, we're offering some type of free lead magnets uh, where they can learn more about the service or product. So it's it really just depends on what you're offering. Just it needs to make sense. But I find that learn more does the best. All right, that's pretty basic stuff. Next, we're going to create uh, actually before we create the lead form, I'm going to show you the uh, the carousel version of this. So let's click on carousel. And then if we scroll down here, uh, we need to start adding cards. They used to just automatically do it. Uh, they, like they used to set you up with three. I guess they don't do that anymore. Whatever. Automatically show the best and add music. I don't, I turn both of these off. Now, it might make sense for you to turn them on. Again, it just depends on what you're doing. Typically, when I'm doing carousel ads, I'm telling a story. Like a, it's like a slideshow presentation. So it doesn't make sense for other cards to show up first because it's gonna ruin the, the whole concept. Like it's not gonna make any sense. So I usually turn them off. It just depends on what you're creating though. So just, just be aware that, that uh, like what these are and the potential impact it could have on the user experience, all right? Now we need to add cards here. You can add video cards now. I think that's pretty cool. I haven't tested that. I usually just do images, but uh, whatever, either way. Uh, and I would recommend testing carousel ad guys, uh, because they, they are frequently the best performing ads within the ad set. Again, I'll do a single image carousel and a video. A lot of the times the carousel ad does the best. So keep that in mind. All right. Um, uh, you'll double click the image just like we did last time, uh, for carousel ads, a 1080 by 1080 is usually best versus the, I think it's 1280 by six. 20, something like that, whatever, for single images. Anyways, you're going to, uh, well, I guess I actually have to add something here. Let's do, uh, let's do this guy right here. All right, so we'll continue. And actually, I suppose this is good. Well, okay. Sometimes it asks if you want to do standard enhancements and what the ratio is. Just do standard ratios for that. Uh, I might actually need to show you an example of that. Let me, let me do that really quick because that might, I, I have just, I know that's gonna throw people off and my goal with this video is to show you guys everything. So let me actually add an actual image here. Let's see if it does it. 
see the next. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. This is exactly what I want to show you uh, why I went back to this. This right here where it says recommended. Don't do it. Original. Look how funky that looks. Like, I don't even know why they would do something like this. Like, that's how your ad would actually show up in the newsfeed. Why they would do that, I have no idea. Always choose original, guys, so that your entire image actually shows up. It's really dumb. And then you click next, optimize. I don't do any of this. Optimizations, blah, blah, blah. Uh, make sure the music is turned off. I don't usually add music. Unless you want music. I mean, it's up to you. Uh, whatever. I, I haven't tested that. I haven't seen a huge difference. Don't think it's going to move the needle. Whatever. All right. So I wanted to show you that because I, I just, I know that's going to throw some people off. Hopefully that helps. All right. Let's go back to carousel really quick and then we'll finish up with the lead form. All right. We're going to change this again. Whoops. Where are you at? Yeah, we're lagging pretty bad. I'm going to turn this preview off. That's what it is. All right. Carousel. Okay. All right. Still has our card here. So we're going to select the image. All right. Click continue. All right. Inserts the image. Make sure you put the headline description. Now um, you do not have as much real estate with the headline for a carousel ad as you do single image. So keep that in mind. You may need to shorten your headline. Otherwise it's going to have three little dots to see more. Not the end of the world, but I try to get my entire call to action in the headline without that. So if you can, all the better. If not, not a, not a huge deal, but add your headline and description. And then however many images you have, like if you're doing or, or videos you have in your carousel ad, you're just going to keep adding the cards and doing the same exact thing. Uh, I usually keep my headline, the same exact one, uh, headline for every single carousel card. I don't change it up. Cause again, I'm trying to create consistency, test out a couple of, uh, you know, a couple different headlines in the same carousel ad. If you want, it's up to you. I'm not saying you can't do that. I'm just sharing what has worked for me. All right. Same thing here. You're going to put your primary text, uh, uh, change the call to action. And now we are going to create our forms. So the, uh, I probably should have mentioned this earlier. I'm assuming that you know what a lead form is because you're watching this like to, to learn how to actually create it. You're not like, hey, you're not searching what is a lead form. But the lead form is just a, a form that pops up when somebody clicks the ad and it auto populates information like name, email, phone number, makes it really, really easy for you to generate leads. Love it. Now, let's create this from scratch. We're gonna create a form. First thing I do, click on settings, open this up. Do not keep this restricted. When you put this on restricted, you can't get free leads. Like when people share your ad, if someone that sees that shared ad wants to submit the form, they won't be able to do it if it's restricted. So why would you not want extra leads? So I always keep this open. All right, let's go back to content. You're going to name it. Now, this is important because uh, so I'll, I'll, what I'll do is um, I'll, put, I'll just put test lead form one. Uh, so I'll usually put whatever it is that I'm offering in the ad, uh, whatever that free lead magnet is. And then I'll put a one at the end. Here's the thing. Um, if you make a mistake or you need to change something later, you cannot edit lead forms. You have to duplicate them, then make the changes, resubmit it. It's a pain. I know. I don't know why they do it this way, but it is what it is. So uh, you want to keep track of which lead form you're on, like what number uh, you're on. That way you can connect it easily to whatever automations or CRM software that you are using. All right. So test lead form one, uh, which uh, also side note, if you're not using go high level, I have a link in the description, more details on that. Uh, Connecting this to go high level, very, very easy. I have training on that too, but you guys have to have a really good CRM, good automation, good follow-up, otherwise generating leads. Like that's only part of the equation. So make sure you have a really good CRM like go high level. I have a two-week free trial down below. Really helps support the channel. Thank you. All right. I usually keep this on more, vo uh, more volume. It's up to you. Uh, this is actually something new right here that uh, I'm going to be testing pretty soon. So I can't speak to this, but this actually allows you to customize the, the lead form a lot more, which I think is really cool. Uh, for now, just to keep things simple, I'm going to choose more volume. The difference is uh, with higher intent, there's going to be an extra step where the person, uh, the, the prospect has to actually confirm the information they originally submitted in the lead form to make sure it's accurate and correct. So you will get higher intent leads, hopefully. I mean, that's the idea anyways. I haven't, uh, I have tested this before. I haven't seen a huge difference, uh, to be quite honest. 
so I usually just leave it on more volume, but it's up to you. All right, intro. Uh, background image. I usually use the image from the ad, again, to add to, uh, to create that consistency so that people know they're in the right spot, that nothing has changed. It's the same offer that they clicked on, et cetera. So I, that, that's usually what I use there. Uh, the greeting right here for the headline is I, uh, what I'll usually put here is what I put in the headline for the ad. Again, creating consistency. So if I'm offering, uh, what did I, uh, what's that image? Uh, offer, uh, lending guide for fleet owners. Okay. So I'm going to put request a free uh, lending guide. Whatever. It doesn't matter. This is just an example anyways. Guide below. Okay. So I'm just, uh, I'm kind of giving them mini calls to action. Well, uh, kind of like mini instructions on what they need to do throughout the entire lead form so that it's it's a very seamless, easy process for them. Paragraph versus list. I usually do lists. I've had good results with paragraph as well. Just don't go too crazy with this stuff. I prefer the list though, because people like tend to consume things a lot easier when they're broken up into bullet points. So I'll usually just put the main benefits, like what are they gonna learn? What are they gonna get out of it? Again, uh, keeping it consistent with my ad copy as well, because I'm usually talking about the benefits and what they're going to get in the ad copy as well. So I'll just take those, put those in the list, kind of as a reminder of what they're going to get with this. All right, so fill that out. I'll just do test here. So you can see what it looks like on the side here. <clears throat> All right, uh, let's see. Questions. All right, so there's some cool stuff you can do here. Description. I will usually just say something like, uh, confirm your information below. So we know where to send whatever it is that you're offering. So uh, please confirm your contact details below to receive XYZ offer. Okay. All right. Now, this is just, I'm kind of OCD about this. I don't think this actually makes a difference, but I'll actually delete full name. I just get the first name. Uh, so we'll go ahead and add phone number. So contact fields phone number, and then user information is going to be first name. You can get full name. I don't think that's a big deal. The order. I always put the name up top. Does that make a big difference? I don't know. But what I just when I'm thinking about the usual process that, that people go through, that like what are people used to when they're doing something like this, when they're providing con contact information? It's usually in a specific order. So we want that, we want the experience to be comfortable. We don't want it to be confusing and like it doesn't seem professional. Like uh, what, what we don't want is for them to, to get the idea in their head or ask themselves like, well, this is way out of order. Like, are they just not paying attention? They're not professional, right? You would think stuff like that doesn't make a big difference. But I'm telling you guys, when someone is first exposed to your brand like this, these these big thing these things do make a big difference. These little things add up. Grammar, spelling, the order of things, right? It needs to be familiar to them. So I always put the name, email, phone number. Always get the phone number, guys. I used to just get name and email. I did not notice a big difference in the lead cost when getting the phone number. And it's so much more powerful. You can make phone calls, do voice drops, do text messages. You're going to convert a lot more of your leads getting the phone number. So I highly recommend it. Now you can also add custom, uh, wait, where, uh, let's see. Well, there's all different kinds of information you get there, but uh, right here, you can add custom questions. When I do this, I only do multiple choice. We don't wanna make the lead form so difficult that people aren't gonna fill it out, but adding custom questions is a really good way to increase uh, or to generate higher intent leads. Um, that's also why I leave it on more volume because I usually do add custom questions here, very simple, yes or no, basic multiple choice questions so that it's not hard, but they can't just submit their name, email, and phone number. Because again, with lead forms, their information right here is going to pre-populate with the information that Facebook already has with them. So it's really, really easy. So we want to make it a little bit more difficult for them to submit the form with these custom questions, but not so difficult that they're not going to submit it. And now you've lost the lead. So I do recommend adding at least one, maybe two multiple choice questions. The more you add, the usually the higher intent leads you're going to get, but also the higher lead costs you're going to get. So keep that in mind. Mul uh, I'm just going to do multiple choice for now. So ask the question, whatever that is, yes. 
put your answers right there and you're good to go. They, they literally just click it and it answers the question. All right. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, we already did this part. All right, cool. We're, uh, we're just about done here. Privacy policy, pretty basic stuff uh, for the link text. I just put privacy policy and then insert the link to your privacy policy. If you don't have one, put it on a blank page. You can go to privacypolicygenerator.org, I think it is. Yes. And uh, you can actually create a free pri uh, privacy policy there. You can put it on your web page, hopefully inside of Go High Level. That's what I recommend. Uh, anyways, um, you paste the link in there. Good to go with that. You can add a uh, custom disclaimer if you want. Message for leads. This is really important, guys, because like I, I see so many people not take advantage of the confirmation page here. And this is really important for getting people to take the next step in your funnel. You absolutely want to take advantage of this because a lot of people will do it. Now, typically what I will do, I have a couple of different strategies for this. I'm not going to go into a ton of detail in this video, but just to give you some idea, I will usually send people to join a Facebook group or to take the next step in my funnel uh, or my client's funnels, which is going to be to uh, fill out a questionnaire, uh, maybe book an appointment. It just depends on the, the funnel that we're using and the industry. But my point is, you, whatever the next step that you want people to take, you want to put it right here. This is really important. All right. Now the headline, I always do the same headline. doesn't matter what industry I'm doing this for. I put, whoops. So I'll put success. And then in all caps, important next step. Please read. Always doesn't matter what I'm doing. Because I want them to know that they are not done yet. There's another step for them to take. So what are we doing here? The description, I'll usually just put something like uh, letting them know that they'll receive an email or in a text or whatever uh, containing whatever it is that they just requested with this lead form. And then I'll say, I'll, I'll kind of transition into the next call to action. And I'll say, in the meantime, go ahead and click the button down below to join our free Facebook group for additional uh, training and resources or click the button below to request your free custom plan or your free strategy session, whatever uh, you want it to be. You don't, you don't want it to be too much like a uh, too strong of a call to action where it's a, uh, it's a big step for them, but this is phenomenal for getting people to, to take another step guys. You, you, you definitely want to do this. I've, I've had a lot of success uh, growing Facebook groups. Uh, so imagine as you're, you're building your email, list, you're, uh, you're getting phone numbers, and you're sending people to a Facebook group as well. Now you have three channels of communication with that prospect. It's really, really powerful. So just think about what you can offer here. Uh, that's the description. The call to action button is just going to be view website. Uh, there's other things you can do here. But I, again, I just I, I always do uh, website, you're going to paste the link with the URL to whatever the next step you want them to take. And then the call to action text is going to, um, I'll mix this up. It again, it depends on what I am offering. Uh, so I might put join the free Facebook group, or if the call to action is a little bit too long, cause you only have so much space here. You can just put click here to, continue. Okay. and then you click publish. That's it. Uh, from there you are going to, uh, so it'll actually create the lead form. Okay. Uh, what I was mentioning earlier, if you want to make changes, you have to duplicate this. And that's why you see, I have multiple numbers here, right? So I'll delete copy. And then this one would be number six. I'll make the changes, publish it. You got to resubmit the ads. Yeah. You know, it's annoying is what it is though. All right. Now, one last thing that I'm going to cover, uh, this is not required, but I do believe like making this a habit early is a good idea is setting up the URL parameters. Cause it's actually not that difficult. And a lot of CRMs will automatically pull this information in. So you know exactly where your leads are coming from inside of your CRM. So like in go high level, for example, I'll be able like using the URL parameters, I can actually do a search by the opportunity source to see where did uh, like, which campaign did these leads come from? Which ad did they come from, et cetera. So setting up these uh, parameters is actually really easy. Just click build a URL parameter, the campaign source is going to be site source name, campaign medium. I always do the ad set name, campaign name. It's pretty basic campaign name. And then the campaign content is going to be the ad name. 
and that's it. All right, click apply. At this point, you're done, guys. You click publish, you're good to go. If you have multiple ads that you're creating, then uh, like typically the way I'll do it is uh, I'll use the same exact headline, same exact ad copy. I'll just change the creatives. So what I'll do is I will duplicate this ad right here and then I'll just change the creative. So this one's a single image. So then I'll duplicate it. I'll change it from an image to a video, click publish on that. Uh, I'll duplicate it again, change it to carousel ad. I'll add all my uh, carousel cards, click publish. That way you're not completely starting from scratch every single time. You create it from start to finish one time, duplicate it, just change the ad creative or the ad copy headline, whatever it is you want to test. And you can very easily get two or three ads within the same ad set very quickly. So that is how you build a Facebook lead form ad campaign. Hopefully this stays relevant for a long time because like I said, Facebook changes things pretty frequently. But uh, for the most part with the ads manager, like they add additional features sometimes. I haven't seen too many big changes as far as what I just showed you. So even if something does change a little bit, you should be able to figure out in the future. All right, now uh, there's other training that I have on, like if you are using Go High Level, how to connect your lead form to something like Go High Level. I'll have a link to that in the description. Um, make sure that you are connecting this to a CRM. I do not recommend using the Facebook lead center and stuff like that. Uh, it's just not uh, nearly as robust as what you, really need in order to convert your leads into actual customers and clients. So I don't recommend that. Make sure you get yourself a good CRM that sends these leads directly into that CRM. All right. That's all I got for you in this video, guys. Give me a thumbs up if the video was helpful. Uh, leave some feedback down below. I'd love to get some comments from you guys. What did you think? Uh, maybe I missed something. You know, if you want me to do another video on something else with regards to Facebook ads, let me know what that is in the comment section. All right. Hope you guys are crushing it. Talk to you in the next one. Matty Ice is out.